Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Franco Pitano. I am a lead product specialist at Databricks, focusing on data warehousing. This was a talk that I gave at the Microsoft Fabric Community Conference. I'm re-recording it here uh, since I shared the slides on social and people asked for the talk. So let's get started. A little bit about me before we dive in. Uh, I am a lead product specialist at Databricks. Uh, I've been practicing data warehousing and BI for over 15 years. Uh, before joining Databricks about five years ago, uh, I had built global data warehouse and BI solutions in the education, finance, banking, and commercial real estate sectors. Uh, and then five years ago, I joined Databricks because I found out what they were doing. Uh, we didn't call it Lake, they didn't call it Lake House yet, but what they were doing with Delta Lake, uh, and I thought it was the future. So I'm here to talk to you today about some of that uh, and where Databricks is going with intelligent data warehousing with Databricks SQL. Before we go in, you know, as I was preparing for this, I kind of took a look at what are the top concerns in data, data and AI modernization that leaders are, and practitioners are having to deal with. You know, and I actually had used AI to perform this research on my behalf. I know that a lot of the conversations I have with customers and prospects yield these results, but I also used AI to see if, if these are the thoughts that a lot of other folks are having, and it turns out they are. First off, it's data security and privacy. The cloud, along with data breaches and hacks from other organizations, has a lot of organizations worried about, is their data secure in the cloud? And is it private? Then data governance and quality. Data governance is not the data police, they're the data enablers. We need to leverage data governance tooling to put data in the hands of the people that can get the job done. But having the actual data is not enough. You actually need to have good quality, well-governed data. You need to have what I call data understanding. You have to know how the data is related, where it comes from, and you have to know about it, metadata, in order to do something with it. And then performance and scalability. A lot of uh, companies read about what others have done when they got into the cloud. And there are blogs all over the internet and talks that talk about how performance ends up taking a hit at some point unless you pour more money in. And at, some, at a certain point of scalability, things just start getting really, really expensive. So there are a lot of concerns out there about how are things going to perform in the cloud and how are things going to scale. And then now with the future with AI, and managing all these systems in the cloud, there's this big gap between skills and expertise of the human resources that have to, to establish these systems, build these systems, and maintain these systems. And then finally, you know, as a result of the growth of the economy or mergers and acquisitions in the business world, companies are having to deal with integrating data from all over the place. Uh, I've heard from customers that they have like a wild, wild west approach to the data that exists in all these subsystems because every time you acquire a company or you merge with another company, you're bringing all of the technical debt of their systems with them. And so the now these large co corporations, conglomerates and such, they're having to deal with data integration from all these different sources. And these are big problems that we're having to deal with today. So let's see how Databricks, Data and AI platform, the data intelligence platform deals with these head on. <clears throat> so what I, we see as, as organizations struggling in the cloud, uh, they're struggling to connect the dots. They have all of these siloed subsystems where maybe a, a portion of their data or all of their data has to be copied or moved between all these systems. And they're struggling to manage this because of three major reasons. First off, data and AI is siloed in all of these different applications or subsystems. And then the way we govern and manage security and privacy in all these systems is unique and bespoke to their own system. So companies are having to re-implement the standard controls in every system, and this is a scalability problem in and of itself. And then finally, they're highly dependent upon highly technical staff to actually get the job done, to implement the system or the migration, and then to manage the system over, over long periods of time. And while you know this is acceptable, usually you have to have highly technical staff. You know the the capability of actually scaling out that staff or being able to make it easier on the organization is a desirable trait. So how does the data lakehouse actually support this? Well, first off, you unify all of the data, all of your data, in your storage accounts. Essentially, uh, 
And in Azure, you have Azure Data Lake Storage Service, or ADLS that we call it. And these are in your accounts. It's your data. You can store all that data. You know, everyone, even the clouds will tell you, store all of your data in Object Store or Raw Blob Store. But you need a system to manage the reliability and performance of that data. You need a way to be able to deal with those files as tables or be able to refine that data into, into constructs that can be used reliably and perform well. And then you need a unified approach to your data governance, security, and cataloging. You can't have all of these different subsystems and many different catalogs that manage the data or the security and the implementations of your governance controls. They should all be unified into one layer. And then finally, once your data storage and governance is taken care of on these open object stores, now we can enable all these different use cases that you have to leverage in order to gain value out of your data and AI uh, investments. And that's data science and uh, AI itself. But you also have to get the data out of all the subsystems and be able to interact with it in real time. And we call this ETL in real-time analytics. Then you have to orchestrate all of these different processes that are happening. Your ETL, maybe your streaming, maybe some of the machine learning, data profiling, quality checks. All of this needs to be orchestrated. And then you need to serve up that data or do data warehousing tasks. Maybe you have to do last mile ETL or transformations. Maybe you need to serve up all that data to BI or data applications. And this is what we traditionally call data warehousing, serving up all of that data in the system to the users where they, are, where they, where they use the data. And on Azure Databricks, uh, Databricks had pioneered this first party oper interoperability on Azure to provide that foundation. In 2020, Databricks pioneered the Lakehouse architecture, which unified the data lake and the warehouse into one, the, finally breaking down that wall, that, that silo between those two systems. How was that done? Like, we, like I said earlier, a unified solution for the storage uh, of that data, and we call this Delta Lake, or and now we have a capability called Uniform, which essentially makes the metadata for all three data lake formats. So you no longer have to choose. We support all three with Delta Uniform. Next, that unified approach to data governance is serviced with Unity Catalog. Here is your one-stop shop to implement all of your security access controls and making sure that you're enabling all of your folks, all of your data workers, with what they need to get their job done. But not just data access, this also is the, the understanding of the data, the metadata, the, the what is this data, how can I use it, how is it related, and where did it come from? All of those questions are answered with Unity Catalog. And then we enable all these use cases with data science and AI, we have Mosaic AI. For ETL and real-time analytics, we have Delta Live tables. To orchestrate everything in the lake house, we have workflows. And then our data warehousing tool is called Databricks SQL. But Lakehouse is not enough. We needed to essentially infuse AI into the platform in order to accelerate into the future. Essentially, the data intelligence engine, which we use, generative AI, to have better semantics of your data. It basically understands your data from the metadata so that it can be more intelligent to how it delivers value to your users. And this can be with performance, with understanding, or simply just asking for something and getting what you need. And we'll explore more of how the data intelligence engine is enabling your data workers to get their job done simpler, faster, and cheaper. We think this new era, the generative AI generation, requires a new approach. And this considers the AI-powered warehouse. How do you get an AI-powered warehouse? Well, first, you start off with the lake house which is that open unified foundation for all of your data. You no longer have to choose between data lake solutions and data warehouse solutions. You have the data lake house, solves for all of them. Then with the new evolution of generative AI, essentially these NLP techniques have already existed, but the power of the transformer and then later with GPT or the general pre-trained transformer and that was made famous by GPT-4, chat GPT, we now see the value in actually having these assistants or these LLMs, these large language models, actually making the platform simpler. And we'll see how we do this at Databricks. But now we're seeing generative AI being applied to products all over uh, the data space. 
or, and the IT space. But we'll talk about how specifically the lake house and generative AI come together to make the data intelligence platform. And we think this is how you truly democratize data and AI across your entire organization so that you can deliver results faster and cheaper. From a high level overview, this is how the Databricks data intelligence platform on Azure integrates with all the Azure components. You can see here that if you're using any uh, SQL servers or any other warehouse or database solutions, we can federate to them. You can ETL data from sensors or IoT, unstructured data, other uh, relational databases, files that get dropped on object store, even unstructured data like media, so audio files or video files, and then even business apps for structured data or even other clouds. We support uh, all of the different Azure components for batch and stream from IoT Hub, Event Hub, and the various data factories. And then this integrates with the data intelligence engine so that Unity Catalog can understand the data that's being that's coming into the Lakehouse. And then we can monitor that data with Lakehouse monitoring so that we can ensure data quality. And Unity Catalog is what enables the, the, the security and governance, but also the data understanding. And I'll talk more about this in a couple of slides. But essentially, underneath the covers, uh, Databricks uh, uh, underlying technology, Spark and Photon, are powering all of the, it's the engine that's powering everything. But essentially, we obfuscate that down, we abstract it away, and we make it really simple for you to integrate. And you see here, you can integrate AI applications. You can even, uh, the best part of Fabric is Power BI. You can integrate Power BI directly to our SQL warehouse. And now you have the full governance of Unity Catalog, you have the Databricks Data Intelligence Engine, and you have the, the collaboration of, of Delta sharing and all, all, everything that you need to enable BI at scale at your organizations. So let's take a look at the Databricks IQ or the Databricks Intelligence Platform, Databricks IQ Engine. Essentially, what is this? It understands your metadata so it can have a better understanding of what your business is and how you operate. So a lot of times organizations have vernacular that's very specific to them. They might have uh, you know, abbreviations, uh, short, how they describe things. They have a vernacular that's unique to them. And so Databricks IQ essentially powers an natural language interface inside of Databricks so that it can understand what your people need contextually and give them what they actually need and not try to st struggle to answer their questions or to get them what they need. It also powers the optimization of the platform itself. So Databricks IQ actually also understands how the users are using the system, and it makes optimizations to the files and to the system so that it could be smarter about how it allocates resources or how it sets certain files so that you get the best price performance out of your platform for, for a relatively low cost. It actually has an algorithm that estimates uh, how, how much return it's going to get based upon an operation. And it only does it if it has a good enough return on investment, uh, which means that there's a floor to, to processing these optimizations and it does it smartly, which customers appreciate. So I'm here to talk to you about Databricks SQL and how we're, how we're kind of revolutionizing uh, a new era in, in data warehousing. And this covers four major surface areas. We're going to talk about text to SQL and text to viz, how you can just ask for what you want and produce SQL code or visualizations. We can even build queries uh, based upon uh, what a user asks for. We, you, the serverless system itself will scale and manage itself in order to allocate the right amount of resources the users need to get their job done, and it's very easy to manage. And then finally, how you can actually use these AI functionality to debug and remediate issues that you might have in your system. And this all happens with Delta Uniform, Unity Catalog, and the Data Intelligence Engine. So Databricks SQL is on a mission to simplify the data warehouse. Uh, we think that, you, that your users deserve this first-class SQL experience for everything. And so we've been building uh, an amazing SQL editor so that users, developers, analysts can query, explore, and transform all the data to get their job done. And we even have rich visualizations in the, in the interactive dashboards so that they can create quick visuals to send out to their business partners to get the job done. And now we have new dashboards that make the sharing, distribution, governance, and security, and even lineage 
so that you can fully understand when a user says, I have a problem with this dashboard, you can track back exactly where it comes from and you can share it with everybody so that you, uh, that you get the best out of these dashboards uh, across your organization. And Databricks SQL is a complete data warehouse. Uh, in the past 40 years, we've been having a long list of different capabilities to make uh, an enterprise grade, scalable, performant native data warehouse engine. And the list goes on and on, but Databricks SQL is a complete data warehouse. It goes up against some of the, uh, against all of the uh, enterprise grade data warehouses, and it definitely shows price performance value and is highly competitive. But first off, you have to have governance and security by Unity Catalog. And Unity Catalog is how you have governance for all of your data and AI assets, not just your structured data inside your tables. Usually most governance solutions only govern the structured data. With Unity Catalog, we govern the unstructured data or the volumes or files of data. We also govern the models that, you, that would be produced by machine learning in order to uh, get value out of that data, as well as any of the other assets that are produced like notebooks, um, or anything like that are all managed under Unity Catalog. So you have a one-stop shop for, for security and auditing of all of your assets on the lake house. And this really helps to make sure that the audit department and all of your regulators have everything they need so that you can focus on delivering value to the business and less on making sure that all of your compliance and all the different uh, regulators. And then we have simple security with private connectivity. This is actually pretty amazing. We just announced that serverless SQL, our serverless warehouse, will actually have private link for no extra charge. Private link actually costs extra as a per bit switched pricing model, and it could be very costly if you're pushing big data through it. But now with serverless SQL, it's included at no extra cost to you. But that's not the only way. We also support firewall support for stable VNet IPs. So depending upon how you want to implement private connectivity, we have options for you. It can be very simple to implement this security and make sure that none of your data leaks to the real world. So one of the main benefits I see out of Unity Catalog is a simple and unified view into all of your data. Essentially, this is how you understand where all the data sits. You can see how it's related uh, using the, the entity relationship diagram. You can see down here, this is how the data is related or the lineage of it. And we have two different views. I'll kind of show you in a little bit, but this is what hap this is what helps you have a data understanding of what's going on with all of your data so that when your users need to use it, they know exactly how to use it. And actually our, the LLMs that we have, the data intelligence engine uses all of this metadata so that it can deliver uh, the responses to your, to your engineers, scientists, and analysts using their own natural language. I didn't say English because everyone speaks a different language and these LLMs can actually understand any language, but it's basically by your users using their own natural language, they can get their job done. There's a single permission model for all your data in AI and it's fine grained access controls on rows and columns of your structured data, as well as item level controls on any other data. And essentially this gives you the same like grant, revoke, deny permission models that you expect out of a, you know, a regular SQL system, but it actually accounts for all of the different objects inside of your catalog, not just structured tables. And then we give you simple powered mo AI monitoring uh, and observability. And this is actually uh, pretty awesome. Essentially, you can put a monitor, a monitor on a table and we'll track drift of that table of the data in there. So you can put real real time alerts there that will notify you if there's quality issues. So if data exceeds a certain threshold, there might be an issue and you can get on, you can be proactive about data quality instead of reactive when a business partner finds it in a dashboard or a report. We can, we keep track of lineage in real time automatically. So whenever anything happens on Databricks compute, we register it in our lineage service. And so we can visualize to the user at any point in time in Unity Catalog, where all that data comes from, where it went to. Uh, so this is great for root cause analysis uh, when you have problems in production with reports. And then these, these dashboards are auto-generated uh, for quality and, and uh, for tracking. So one of the, the benefits of having the data and AI costs in this governance dashboard is you can, we actually forecast 
the costs for you so that you can see how much is the uh, are these operations costing and you can even put alerts that help you manage your costs over time and this really helps with the observability for operational intelligence uh, like billing audit lineage all those great things and then you know once your data is available now in unity catalog oftentimes we find that organizations need to share data this could be internally this could be externally but essentially, the benefit of Delta sharing is that it's a open source protocol, so you avoid ven excuse me, vendor lock-in on this data. And so that's a big proponent. The other thing is that Delta sharing now works with R2 by Cloudflare, so you can actually remove egress from sharing that data across clouds, regions, or platforms. Um, that is actually a really great proponent. And you can share more than data. You can actually share ML models, notebooks, dashboards, applications, and you can even monetize these data products on our marketplace. Essentially, uh, and as well as, as uh, securely uh, collaborating on, on sensitive data, we have uh, clean rooms. So essentially, you can uh, observe exactly what people are doing in order to and approve commands in order, it's in order to have secure collaboration. These are amazing features uh, to help organizations work together to get their job done. One of the big proponents that of the of the lake house that I think a lot of leaders appreciate is federation. You know, migrations in some circles are a four letter word. Oftentimes, they're a big bang approach or boil the ocean approach to your data platform. You have to migrate all of your pipelines and it's going to take a year to two years. You have to run them in parallel. The story goes on and on. It's a very, very, very tough process. With Lakehouse Federation, you can essentially federate to all that data and even materialize it into Lakehouse. And so now you have a very simple approach. You can avoid a full, a full migration by leveraging federation. And what I advise is since Unity Catalog tracks all the consumption and we know all the lineage, you know what data sources are valuable for the business. So then you could have a business value-based approach where you then will migrate those federated sources that people are using. And now you can prioritize what data sources are really, really important to the business and then also get their buy-in. Because once they start using it and they find value out of it, you can flip to incremental CDC instead of federation and you can bring those costs down and increase in your margin. This is a pretty flexible approach that a lot of leaders and practitioners appreciate in order to avoid migrating their entire platform all at once. And another benefit about Federation with Unity Catalog is that you can secure the credentials inside of Unity and you can grant access controls with Unity, grant, revoke, and, revoke, and deny to all of your users. So typically with Azure, you would sync the Entra ID or the groups to Databricks, and then you can do group-based access controls on all of those federated sources. So this, apl this applies a unified view while also having gut data governance on top, as well as lineage uh, and access. So a really flexible approach to get into the lake house. Then, like I said, once the business value for a data source has been found, you can then flip to incremental CDC, which is a really uh, low latency, high throughput methodology to get data from these systems into the lake house. And this comes from our acquisition of Archeon from last year. And essentially it's a low code, no code UI to ingest all that data. If you're inter interested in this, we're uh, private previewing it with some of our customers right now. And then uh, more and more businesses want to get real time. They, 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 you know, everyone's used to batch processing of the past decade, couple decades, and they want more real time data because they want to be able to react in real time to the changing winds of the business. And now with uh, with Databricks SQL, we offer simple streaming with streaming tables inside of Databricks SQL, and this actually offers a lot of things uh, out of the box. It's actually based off of Autoloader, which is a pretty interesting, a pretty amazing suite of technology in Databricks that essentially has efficient incremental processing of files or event buses uh, data as it comes into the platform. And essentially here, you can enable more analysts to leverage streaming capabilities in the platform because it's pretty simple with just SQL. And then typically what we do in business intelligence in order to accelerate these dashboards is create materialized views. 
Materialized views essentially materialize the business logic inside of these views in order to have faster performance on, on query serving. Basically, the queries don't have to compute all of the complex logic. With uh, kind of naive materialization, it does it at full computation every time it refreshes, and this could be very costly. What we've done with uh, what we've done with materialized views is have a incremental approach to refreshing these uh, materialized views, which means lower costs and better performance for the business. Uh, and essentially, these materialized views are also governed by Unity Catalog, so you can make sure that all of your data governance needs are taken care of. And I've talked about this uh, before, about how a lot of practitioners and leaders want better data understanding or simpler data understanding of what's going on with their data inside the platform. And here, if you leverage the Databricks primary key foreign keys inside of Unity Catalog, and essentially you just have to, when you do the create table syntaxes uh, or alter table, you just declare the primary key foreign key, we'll actually visualize that inside of the UI so users can visually understand how their data is related. The also benefit is for BI tools. If the BI tool can understand and write better queries, if it takes advantage of that data, that metadata, it will do that. So like Power BI actually will understand the data model and it will build better queries uh, to, that will execute. So this actually has the double benefit. Not only does it help with data understanding for the users, but it also helps with performance in BI applications. And all of this is is automatically tracked in real time. So as soon as anyone changes anything in the system, this, this ERD is updated, which is an amazing capability. Next, what we find is that getting simple performance out of these systems, out of these complex warehouse systems, often requires a lot of effort on like a DBA or an administrator. And there are a lot of different approaches to this in the space. There are some vendors that do what I call a brute force model to this. They just micro partition all of the data and they make you pay for it, which can be very expensive, but you get good performance. With predictive optimization, what we do is we automatically schedule all the jobs that kind of maintain the data in a really good state, like optimize vacuum and analyze to collect statistics. What's happening here is that we're all gonna automatically do these jobs on your behalf actually based upon an algorithm. Uh, like I said earlier, it has a return on investment calculation because it understands what's happening with the queries from the system tables, how the users are querying the data. It will then estimate how much return am I going to get if I do these optimizations? And there's a floor. If it doesn't exceed a certain threshold, we won't do the operations. And so here, we're actually looking out for your best interests as a customer. We're going to make sure that we only do performance optimizations when it makes sense. So we're not just wasting your money uh, on your behalf. And we'll even prove it to you with out-of-the-box observability with system tables. You can see here that, that Anker was, was very pleasantly surprised when they found that their storage costs went down by half and their queries sped up by double. That's amazing. Doesn't everybody want that? And then I mentioned workflows earlier. A part of data warehousing is the orchestration of all of the complex transformations that happen. With Databricks, you can leverage the built-in orchestrator called Databricks Workflows. And here you can orchestrate your SQL, notebooks, dashboards, alerts, anything on the Databricks platform you can orchestrate with workflows. And it really helps to bring uh, simple orchestration with reliable monitoring and uh, observability. Workflows just comes with the platform. There's no extra cost. You should definitely take advantage of it. Uh, it's a great enterprise grade workflow uh, scheduling system, uh, and it has great uptime and availability. I think the last stat was like 99.99% uptime. So you should definitely check it out. And then there's our simple and deep integration with Power BI. Power BI is probably the best BI tool that exists. I think the Tableau people would disagree, but it is one of the best Power BI, uh, BI tools in the industry, and it's great. It actually does a lot. And we're deepening our partnership with the Power BI team. You're going to be able to push semantic models directly to Power BI workspaces from right within the Databricks UI. You won't have to go through Power BI desktop. And you'll be able to push entire schemas, including the relationship with PKFK. And like I said earlier, not only does that help with data understanding, but it also helps with performance in Power BI. So that's amazing. And if for some odd reason you're using AWS Databricks with Power BI, there are a lot of people that do that. We now support Azure AD and direct query support. 
And then long running queries had a weird glitch that are now supported with Azure AD. So now you don't have weird timeouts, uh, token timeouts on the users. And then finally, we're improving performance with Power with the Power BI team by improving pushdowns and other types of capabilities with the Microsoft team. While we were at the conference, I had asked people to go to booth 301 for a demo. But if you do want a demo, definitely check out databricks.com slash demo hub or demos. Uh, I'll post a link when I post the video, but you can definitely find some Power BI demos there if you want to see them. So we've talked a lot about how we were simplifying the warehouse approach. Now I want to talk to you about how we're simplifying usability with these AI-infused experiences. And there's four major things that we're working on to simplify this. First off, the metadata itself. Inside of Unity Catalog, we ha now have AI-generated documentation. What Excuse me. What this means is that you can click a button and it will generate what it thinks this table is and the columns, and you can accept that, that documentation. Generally, we find that this is actually pretty good. Uh, one of the things that uh, LLMs are really great at is describing what's going on, documenting code, documenting metadata. Uh, and we found we actually built our own model. We published a blog on this. Uh, this is actually a pretty simple problem to solve. Uh, and a lot of our customers are leveraging this, and now they're increasing uh, their understanding of data by leveraging AI to fill in all of the blank spots where they had missing metadata before. And this actually helps boost AI. I'll talk to you about it in some later slides, but if you do this first, you're going to have a great time with a lot of the other AI-infused experiences. And one of those is the assistant. The assistant is with you, helping you, your, your, your workers, your data workers throughout the day. I call this the productivity booster. This is the real 10x booster for your, for your human resource staff, your technical staff. So if they need to help writing SQL, a lot of times you have to like uh, shift between going to the documentation. What were the parameters for this function? How do I use this? What was the name of that parameter? Uh, here you can just ask the assistant, generate me SQL, and it will go ahead and do it for you. Uh, it, this, again, with the enhanced metadata in the previous step, is able to understand the contextual information of what the user really wants, and it's able to get it to them much, much quicker. So if you actually complete or finish out your documentation with the previous step, this step becomes a lot more beneficial. And then we're not just helping you create SQL or text to SQL, we're also doing text to visualizations. So within Lakeview, our new dashboarding capability, you can quickly create some visualizations from your data without having to click and drag on the screen. You just tell the assistant what you want to see, and it will go ahead and create those visualizations on your behalf for you. And then you can deliver your analytics much, much faster to your business partner. The way I advise this is that if you're on your way to a meeting, you know, in like an hour and you need some quick visualizations and you don't have time to create a whole Power BI dashboard, you can put something together really, really quickly with Lakeview. And then Project Genie. This is a brand new capability that is coming out with Databricks. Internally, we call it Genie because it grants all your wishes. We're probably going to call it Data Rooms to the public. And this is what some of us call chat with your data. Here, you, this is more, uh, this is not much of a productivity booster. This is actually for business users. This is for their non technical staff. They know what they want in natural language. They don't know how to write code to get that answer. And typically, they would interrupt an analyst to say, hey, can you give me this one uh, answer to this question? Hey, I need to, can you write, can you do SQL to answer me this question? I need a visualization for the meeting I'm running into. And here, instead of interrupting an analyst, you can actually go into this chat room and ask questions. And the assistant, uh, actually, this is more of like a data room. Uh, it's an assistant plus plus. It will actually execute the SQL on your behalf, get you an answer. So this is ask question, get answer, not ask uh, for, for SQL or ask for viz. So it will actually create the SQL on your behalf, execute it, and give you a response. It will try to answer your question. <laughs> and you can even use it to create quick visualizations. This is what really enables all of the end users, all the business users in your organization, so that they don't have to interrupt the analysts in order to get uh, the answer to their question. And then we're infusing AI into SQL itself. So AI query is one of the first functions that we created. Here's how your data scientists or your machine learning engineers 
can make what they're creating in their models available to SQL users. So they can register a model for serving in the model serving REST endpoint in MLflow. And then you can reference that in AI query, and you can essentially build AI smarts directly into your SQL with AI query. This is amazing, but we didn't stop there. Actually, some people said, I don't have my own ML engineer or data scientist or a small company. Um, I just need a sentiment analysis, or I need help classifying something, or I need help extracting certain uh, nouns or certain content out of uh, maybe unstructured text. The list goes on and on. So essentially, we built these, these AI uh, functions directly into the SQL syntax. So now you can leverage these without having your own model REST serving endpoint. And these are great. I was actually talking to a customer that was trying to do fuzzy matching. And it's very, very difficult to do fuzzy matching. I remember back in the SQL server days, I used to have to mess with the phonic functions. And it was always a roll of the dice if it actually worked. SQL AI similarity is amazing. It could actually compare two results and it actually is much better than the NLP algorithms that we had before. You should definitely check out some of the new SQL, uh, how we're simplifying AI within the SQL. And then there's geospatial support. You know, what we're finding is that there's two main things that companies are asking. It's where and when. A lot of times you wanna track events, where they happened, when they happened, and then you're trying to track all a lot of dimensions around that. So where is very important. And so we're increasing support for geospatial and Databricks SQL. You can do things like fast spatial joins. We efficiently store that data so that you're not consuming a lot of uh, consumption on your data in ADLS. And we, and we integrate with the, the maps and visualizations uh, in ML so that you don't have to switch between all these different tools to get value out of your geospatial data. And then finally, there's Python user-defined functions. A lot of times, SQL is great. SQL is a declarative language. It's set-based. So a lot of times, the biggest gap that exists is iterative logic. And this is where people use Python. But now you can bring the Python, the, the specific needs that you need out of Python to SQL with Python user-defined functions. The claim to fame here is that the Python runs on the same VM in an isolated execution environment, which means you don't have to pay for another VM or another service it's all built right into the SQL warehouse. And that's actually pretty cool. So finally, uh, I just want to recap what we talked about today. Some of the top concerns in the data and AI space with modernizing in the cloud for leaders and practitioners, you know, first couple are data security and privacy and data governance and quality. We talked through how Unity Catalog plus the five, private connectivity that's provided with private link uh, basically deliver these, these capabilities in a really safe and secure way. Then there are concerns about performance and scalability, and we talked about how we're using AI to optimize the performance to give you a simple uh, way to get really good performance and scalability. Then to address the skills and expertise gap, we're leveraging AI to simplify the experiences, whether it's the assistant or the, meta, uh, the, uh, the, the do AI do generated documentation, or the AI-generated uh, visualizations in Lakeview, or even the amazing capabilities of data rooms to answer all of the questions the business has so they don't have to interrupt your analysts. This is how we're simplifying the experiences to, to bridge that gap for skills and expertise. And then finally, to integrate all of the data that exists all, all over the place in these organizations, we built Lakehouse Federation, but we didn't stop there. We also acquired Archeon to do ingestion with CDC incrementally and with low latency and high throughput. So this means you can kind of dip your toe in with federation, find the value, and then flip to ingestion when there's enough value so you don't have to boil the ocean with a huge migration all at once. And I think that by addressing these top concerns in your data and AI modernization attempts, Databricks is helping you accelerate into the future with AI by getting your data ecosystem all under control. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time today. It was a pleasure presenting these topics. I hope you found value in it. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, reach out to me. I'll be sharing this on LinkedIn. Uh, be happy to address your comments or uh, DM me. Uh, have a great day, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it.